Hey, it's Mike here, and today, from high egg prices to the bird flu virus that flew the coop recently, yes, I will be making extra lame jokes in this video just to deal with this anxiety-ridden topic of viruses. After hearing so much about these super high egg prices and some egg shortages, and then witnessing a pretty much empty shelf of eggs in Colorado, I thought, hey, why don't I just do a video on the economic situation here? It seems like a lot's going on. Well, boy, was I in for it. There's just been so much media noise about all of these egg prices that it seems that a really important thing has gone under the radar. A little over a week ago, we got reports saying that this virus appears to, for the first time, be spreading mammal to mammal. So it's jumped to the mammals. This has been referred to by top virologists as a warning bell for the next pandemic. And speaking of bells, you can hit that notification bell. And seriously, a lot of you have said, even doing that, they haven't gotten notifications that might be notification settings, so check that out. But there are some really important lessons in here, and I know we don't wanna be talking about panties, any more pandemics. I've literally just been listening to ASMR during the whole researching time of this video to relax, but we can't just put our head in the sand. We gotta learn about this and bring attention to the issue. Let's go. Let's start by talking about prices. You know, Previous months have been riddled with news headlines like this one about high egg prices. And here is my footage of the shelf at a grocery store in Colorado. You can see the cheap egg shelf is pretty much entirely gone. Probably just a couple cartons of cracked eggs there and a sign limiting purchase per person. But then actually, if you go up to the fancy, more marketed eggs, you can see there's a lot of those left, but still. And yeah, the price of eggs went up by 60% in the last year in general. And there was even a price spike around the holidays of over 250% of what it was at the beginning of the year. And from The Guardian, we've seen a dozen eggs going for as high as $18. And here is the actual supply and demand chart from the USDA. And you can see that, yeah, supply <laughs> made it down pretty low in late 2022, but why? There are a few reasons and we can mention them briefly, but the main reason again from the USDA is H pie, not hot apple pie, not huckleberry pie, but quote, highly pathogenic avian influenza or flu. Of course, a disease infecting birds and poultry struck egg laying hens throughout 2022. As a result, they say egg inventories were 29% lower in the final week of December than at the beginning of the year. And by the end of the year, 43 million egg laying hens were lost to the disease itself or to depopulation. Yeah, just depopulated. Don't they make like the mass killing of animals sound so nice and innocuous? How about the new movie Chicken Run 2, Depopulated? I don't wanna watch that movie. And by the way, just in case you're curious, the total running US population of chickens is 500 million. So pretty big chunk taken out. And here it's really important to learn more about the type of flu. And in this case, it is H5N1, which originated on a goose farm in China in 1996. And then a decade later spread to migratory birds in 2005. With that, it spread around the world. And then by 2020, we got a new, a little more aggressive variant referred to as 2.3.4.4b. Let's do better than that, okay? We can make something a little bit more memorable. I'll let you write it in the comments. But it's super aggressive from The Guardian. The American Egg Board says that it has a near 100% fatality rate in birds. I. And I always have to remind people that the original wild flus before the domestication of birds were actually non-lethal and we're just jumping from pond to pond, from geese, etc. But since we've packed all of these animals closer and closer together, that virus can still do a lot of damage and kill the animal and be rewarded and spread to other birds because they're so crammed. You know, as opposed to that original type of flu that wanted the bird to remain healthy so it could fly. Interesting stuff, but some people have actually pointed to some false pretenses here with the high prices. One organization said that this was all just sort of corporate greed manipulating prices and taking the flu as an excuse. Again, to The Guardian, the industry responds by just saying everything is more expensive. But yeah, corporate greed and there is a trend of just inflation, so let's make everything way more expensive and then have record-breaking profits. Anyway, I'm not so worried about the short-term economics here. I'm a lot more worried about the potential for a pandemic because pandemics are scary. Panties equal soiled panties. 
Now we need to talk about the spread of the virus, what it can spread to, what it can't. And it is worth mentioning, really important point that some people might not know, that H5N1 has already infected and killed quite a few humans from the WHO as they were reporting on the first case in the US, which was 2022. Also in Colorado, they remind us that since 2003, about 864 cases and 456 deaths from H5N1 have occurred in humans. And that's an insane case to death ratio. And yeah, it has been reported as high as 60%. So very lethal flu. What's that killer's lyric again? But we can relax a little bit because as this BMJ article mentions, yeah, that 60% is probably a bit inflated. It's not quite as low as other viruses, but still probably between like 14 and 33% of actual cases reach fatality. Way higher than COVID. However, people have been a little bit more chill about this because that spread to humans has been directly from birds and it's not spreading human to human. Just normal when we're dealing with growing chickens for meat. No, that's just the acceptable level of risk we operate at. So dumb. <laughs> but now to the new news here, which is this Euro surveillance report, which mentions that, yeah, in late 2022 in Spain on a mink farm, a lot of mink got H5N1, and due to the circumstances, it's very likely that this was transmitted from mink to mink or mammal to mammal. And that would be the first time, and they say it likely, just started from a migratory bird, spreading it to some of the mink. We'll go over the debate of whether it's really occurring or not in a second, but as Science Mag reported, we have several top you know, virology-related people saying, for example, from Tom Peacock, virologist at Imperial College London, this is incredibly concerning and a clear mechanism for an H5 pandemic to start. They essentially found that there was a unusually high death rate of mink on this farm, and then they tested them. They tested positive for H5N1. And then, yeah, they quarantined the workers and killed about 50,000 mink. Of course, the situation is always kill more animals. Yeah, if you're not gonna be killed for eyelashes in a few months, then we're gonna kill you earlier because of a virus. Humans. However, I do need to be clear that there is a level of debate on whether or not there really is mammal to mammal transmission. You now from this article, they're challenging it saying, you don't have a smoking gun of it actually going from mink to mink here, so we don't actually know. However, the case is pretty strong. Well, they're saying that it could be contaminated feed. There doesn't appear to be contaminated feed in the area. So what is it just like a couple birds came and just diarrheaed all over the mink? I don't know. I mean, if you've had the flu before, that's a possibility. Unlikely for a few reasons. First of all, we have the numbers here. Of the 50,000, they saw a 4% death ratio instead of a normal like 0.2, 0.3% death rate of these animals. And so we're talking about at least 2,000, probably a lot more than 2,000 of these mink getting the virus. And then as the report states, it started out at one point and then radiated outward throughout the whole holding. No, so we have that geospatial spread, which supports spreading from mammal to mammal. And this whole situation immediately made me think of those mink in Denmark that got COVID and even developed their own strain. Thankfully that was stopped. And just the general situation of what is most likely to have occurred with COVID happening. You know, we have a study showing that the raccoon dog was very likely the culprit because samples from that Wuhan wet market really lit up at the raccoon dog cages. So it likely jumped again to one of those smaller mammals and then to humans. So extra concerning. And finally, as Tom Peacock, which is just a great name, <laughs> mentions, uh, yes, they did actually see genetic changes in the mink virus compared to the bird virus with a mutation that makes it easier to infect animals. But thankfully there was another concerning mutation that has not occurred yet. A little good news. And I also have another concern around this that really needs to be brought up all over social media. This price hike in eggs has got people talking about getting backyard chickens, backyard laying hens to save money, you know, all this like, three easy steps to get backyard chickens videos. Well, just over a week ago, I had to dig to find this. We have a nine-year-old girl who is hospitalized with meningitis and all signs point to these sort of backyard chickens giving her the virus. 
And yes, this actually occurred in Ecuador, but this was the first case that was reported in all of Latin America of H5N1. So with migratory birds, this could happen anywhere. And we really do want to minimize chicken-human contact because it can also just jump directly, not like it probably did on a chicken farm in Kansas with the 1918 flu, which killed a quadrillion people. That's a real number. So obviously I'm gonna tell you that a better alternative would be plant-based products. We have the you know, whole food-ish way of going with flax eggs, making those eggs with flax and water, which I personally like a lot. And then I did notice that Just Egg swooped in here and made an ad about how their product doesn't get the flu, of course. And I will say making omelets out of Just Egg, I cannot tell the difference between real eggs at all. If you're somebody that wants that like sulfuriness, you can just add some black salt. And I'd love to see some blind taste tests on that because I don't think people would pass. In the end, when top scientists in the field tell you that there's a warning bell that was just rung in terms of a upcoming pandemic, we need to listen. We need to change our habits. We need to obviously stop mink farming. We need to be lowering and lowering the amount of chicken farming as much as is possible. Personally, I would like it to be zero. No, backyard chickens are not safe. And as more people get them, we could have more of a risk of that direct human transmission. And yeah, plant proteins are safe though. You're not gonna get the flu from plant-based proteins. And they also will not be atherosclerotically, cholesterolotically clogging all them arteries. We don't need to use real words <laughs> anyway. Let me know down below what you think about all this. I'm sure there are some insightful details that you have that I did not mention. And of course you can like and subscribe, hit that notification bell for videos that are usually not as anxiety inducing. <laughs> so thanks a lot. See you in the next one. Bye.